Hello, everyone. Welcome to this seminar on administrative violence and the Taiji Man case in Taiwan. I'm Alessandro Micarelli. I'm a human rights lawyer and chairman of the European Federation for Freedom of Belief. As a group of scholars, human rights activists, professionals, academicians, and people in different ways involved in in the discourse of human rights and freedom of belief, we organized a number of meetings on the Taiji Man case in Taiwan. And today, being the international uh, day uh, uh, regarding the victims of acts of <laughs> violence based on religion or belief, we are having two seminars and we are now um, doing session two of the seminar. Um, we have uh, four speakers today. And uh, uh, we will start, however, with a video on Taiji Man return to Washington, D.C., calling for action. So we have this video first, and then we will start with the panelists' presentation. Thank you. Twenty-one years ago, Taiji Man Qigong Academy visited Washington, D.C. as ambassadors of peace and goodwill. The Mayor of the District of Columbia does hereby proclaim March 22, 2000 as Taiji Men Qigong Academy Day in Washington, D.C. And we welcome these international ambassadors of peace and goodwill. 21 years later, members of Taiji Men Qigong Academy returned to Washington, D.C. to seek justice and raise international awareness of their situation. Taiji Men Qigong Academy is a spiritual group with various academies in Taiwan and the U.S. The group strongly believes that they are being persecuted in democratic Taiwan through a tax evasion indictment beginning in 1996 that reached Taiwan's Supreme Court. Despite the Supreme Court of Taiwan's rulings that we're innocent and tax-free, a few rogue bureaucrats continue to send us tax bills, and even just last year in 2020, our land was illegally auctioned off. Justice for Taiji Men! This summer, Taiji Men Qigong Academy and the Action Alliance to Redress 1219 publicized their cause through live and virtual events. The Action Alliance to Redress 1219 is a group of international and Taiwanese legal, religious, and human rights specialists working to rectify the Taiji Men case and defend religious and spiritual freedom. In Washington, D.C., members of Action Alliance to Redress 1219 participated in the three-day International Religious Freedom Summit. Former U.S. Ambassador Sam Brownback helped launch the summit as a forum for tackling religious discrimination around the world. The charter that we put forward for this summit is a broad-based charter for all faiths or people of no faith at all, but it's about protecting that right of freedom of belief or conscience, freedom of religion. In 2007, the Taiwan Supreme Court found Taiji Men Qigong Academy not guilty of tax evasion and cleared the group of all charges. But Taiwan's Taxation Bureau disregarded the court decision and continued to impose taxes on Taiji Men Qigong Academy. In Taiwan, our enforcement law actually matches the two international covenants because it says that the properties for worship, for prayings, are not subject to be seized. During a June 17, 2010 public hearing in the Legislative Yuan, Taiwan's Ministry of Finance openly agreed to resolve the case within two months. That has still not occurred. As a result, Taiji Min's sacred land was auctioned and nationalized on August 21, 2020. What we're asking for is to return that property to Taiji Min and to hold the corrupt officials accountable. The group visited Tecro the Taiwan Economic and Cultural Representative Office, where Taiji Men Qigong Academy silently protested outside. Tecro representatives came outside to talk to the protesters. Taiji Men members delivered a message and books about the case to them. We're Taiji Men members in the USA. We're calling on Taiwan's government, especially President Tsai, to redress our test case. We have just conveyed our message to Taiwan's representative Xiao in the DC. Until Taiwan's government take quick action to redress our case and return our land, we'll keep advocating for our case in the U.S. and internationally. So far, there has been no response from the Taiwan government. 
The Action Alliance to Redress 1219 continues to ramp up global awareness through efforts like virtual forums. It is the year 2021 and we hope sooner rather than later that the case will be resolved. And I think we're standing in front of something that is a big symbol for justice. Um, and we hope to continue our fight. This journey is not only for ourselves, but for human rights all around the world. Okay, very interesting video. I guess if someone had no idea what the old case of Taishimani is all about in Taiwan, we'll now have a basic idea of what happened to this peaceful organization in democratic Taiwan. We can now start the uh, seminar with the first speaker, Katrina lantos Sweat. Dr. Lantos Sweat is president of the Lantos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice in the United States. Greetings. My name is Dr. Katrina Lantos Sweat, and I'm so pleased to be able to join you for this important online conference. I had the privilege of serving as the chair of the US Commission on International Religious Freedom. And most recently, I was honored to join Ambassador Sam Brownback as the co-chair of the Earth Summit 2021, which took place in July in Washington, DC, with over a thousand participants from around the world. Those of us who have been engaged in the cause of religious freedom for many years, welcome this opportunity to an address an issue that is near and dear to our hearts on this International Day commemorating victims of acts of violence based on religion or belief. It is particularly appropriate that we should be meeting right now as the world watches with great alarm the unfolding takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban. The violence and brutality that characterized Taliban rule in the past is a powerful reminder to us all that freedom of religion and conscience is a fundamental human right one that respects the individual autonomy and freedom of each one of us. Those who seek to impose their beliefs on others through violence or intimidation are enemies of religious freedom, and we must have the courage and determination to stand up to them. When the world adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, they included among the inviolable rights that all humans are entitled to the freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. Despite the clear, broad, and inclusive language of Article 18, as we look around the world, we see grave violations of religious freedom that affect billions of people across the globe. The very worst abuses typically take place in dictatorships, whether they be religious theocracies like Iran and now Afghanistan, which demand adherence to their prescribed beliefs or aggressively atheistic governments like the communist governments in China and North Korea. In these circumstances, we see the wholesale repression and persecution of religious communities and individuals, often involving violence, imprisonment, and even death. These circumstances should outrage the conscience of the world and clearly much more must be done to confront these countries and hold them to account for their violation of international law. But what is also deeply concerning is that sometimes serious religious freedom abuses take place in countries that we identify as democratic and rights-based. Pakistan and India are both democracies, but in each of these countries we see grave and ongoing violations of freedom of religion, conscience, and belief. Pakistan targets its Ahmadiyya community for overt discrimination and persecution, and its aggressive application of its anti-blasphemy laws places Pakistan in the embarrassing position of having more people on death row for the phony crime of blasphemy than any other country. India, the largest democracy in the world by population, has seen a drastic downward trend in religious freedom conditions, according to the most recent report of USERF. There is widespread harassment and violence 
directed at religious minorities and nationalist BJP-led government officials have proven themselves unwilling or incapable of confronting this challenge. Even countries that have been shining examples of robust and vibrant democratic rule have failed in some notable instances to fully protect the conscience rights of their citizens. There were grave concerns expressed during the height of the COVID pandemic about scapegoating of some religious communities in South Korea. And in Taiwan, the long running attack against the Taiji men community by bureaucratic despots within the tax administration have led many religious freedom experts around the world con to condemn this form of administrative religious persecution. To their everlasting credit, so many of the communities that have been unfairly targeted and attacked have found within their faith the strength not to return evil with evil, but have sought to remain an influence for goodness, forgiveness, brotherhood, and virtue within their communities. I am full of admiration for those who have the strength to live out their ideals, even in the face of terrible injustice and I hope to learn from their inspiring example. The defense of religious freedom is vital, not only because it protects the individual dignity and conscience of our fellow human beings, but because societies that protect this basic right are societies that will also protect the other precious human rights we all cherish. I'd like to close by sharing a story that I think illustrates this point. In the 1300s, the theologian, writer, and priest John Wycliffe believed he was called by God to translate the Bible from the Latin Vulgate into the common vernacular that ordinary men and women could read and understand. He undertook this task despite the determined opposition of the ecclesiastical authorities of his day and in the face of grave persecution. Despite all, he persisted, and when he was done, he wrote the following words in the flyleaf of that first Bible. I quote, the translation is complete and shall make possible government of the people, by the people, and for the people. What a remarkable thing to write. Words that were echoed centuries later by Abraham Lincoln in his immortal Gettysburg Address. I believe Wycliffe meant by those words that when men and women are free to seek and find truth for themselves, they become empowered to build societies that honor and defend the conscience and civil rights of all people. Thank you. Thank you very much to Dr. Lantel Sweat for the very inspiring words and uh, the final remark, which is an invite to everyone to keep doing what we are presently doing for Taiji men in Taiwan and for everyone around the world. We can now have the second speaker, Mr. Hans Nott. Mr. Hans Nott is president of the Gerhard Nott Foundation for Freedom of Religion or Belief from the Netherlands. Hans, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex. Very much appreciated that I can say something today. Some time ago, I made some uh, remarks and a summary of the illegal activities of the Taiwan National uh, Tax Bureau, the NTB, against the Taiji men during the past 23 years. We named trumping up non-sustained charges of fraud, inconsistently and illegally charging tax demands and heavy fines, <clears throat> uh, carrying out raids, auctioning off and confiscating sacred land, illegally freezing bank accounts and even unauthorized withdrawing money from the defendant's bank account. Cutting off the utility power, public slander, defamation, inhumane interrogation practices, unlawful imprisonment, creating an illegal anti-cult organization, withholding information from the public, lying in court, corruptively paying bonuses to tax officers in order to put pressure on the defendant and more. These are no false claims, as all of them have been proven in the courts and sustained as such. I made my concluding remarks 
and I expressed my frustration to my inability to make heads or tails out of this, out of the motive of the National Tax Bureau. I still don't understand why. Call me naive, perhaps, but it just doesn't make any sense to me as the consequence of such behavior can never be for the benefit of the people of Taiwan that they serve. Such behavior clutters up the, the legal system and it wastes money of the taxpayers. It causes distrust of the National Tax Bureau and the government integrity. It sends the message to the public that the National Tax Office can get away with impunity. And it is above the law rather than a servant of the law and the people. The message too is that religious freedom and freedom of expression is all relative in Taiwan. It touches on the limited form of democracy. And that in turn is a sensitive topic in international relations and regional security. Taiwan is balancing the trade and security ties with Europe, the USA and China. In my view, Taiwan cannot afford toying with these relationships by not having its own house in order and keeping the National Tax Bureau on a, on a leash. But there is another matter that concerns me about this case. Of course, there is, according to Taiwanese law, the freedom of religion, or to be more specific, freedom for religions, of course, so long as they act within the bounds of the law. But below the surface, there's another discussion that is part of this. It is the freedom of expression, freedom of association to religions, and freedom of conscience. This is about individual inalienable rights. When individuals lose any of these freedoms, or if the government does not protect the people so that they can act them out, then people get hurt. And I'm sorry to say that that is what happened as a consequence of the practices of the National Tax Bureau. I would like to share with you the testimony of some of the victims. Rebecca Wong, Assistant System Coordinator at a te technology company, writes, I was one year old when the Taiji Men case happened in 1996. It was not until I grew up that I realized how much pressure and discrimination were against us. Some of the people were mocked by their teachers and classmates at school. Some were roared by pedestrians when going for a dinner. Some even lost their jobs. Who were the breadwinners in the family? Nonetheless, our Shifu told us to love this country and to insist on doing the right things." Unquote. Here we have a case about someone who is going through life being discriminated against because of belonging to a religion. Imagine the emotional scars it creates when people have to deal with the constant pressure of being inferior. Such upbringing influences one's emotional development for life. It cannot be undone. But it can even get worse, as attested by Wang Dingchang, a Taiji Men disciple who served in the military until 1976. After discharge, well, he began working for the, large, uh, for the largest publishing house in Taiwan and to be eventually promoted as assistant vice president. He supervised over 500 people, employees. In 1998, he joined Taiji Men. When the tax bureau crackdown happened in 1996, he was uh, one of Dr. Hong's disciples brought in for questioning. Then a week later, he was taken to the Taipei Investigation Bureau for, integ for interrogation by three investigators of that bureau. They had first searched his house without warrant. During the interrogations, he was threatened intimidated and coerced in attempts to force him to provide testimonies against Dr. Hong. During his interrogation, the officers called his employer and destroyed his credibility, which led to a forced resignation. His family faced a financial crisis after he, job, after he lost his job. And finding another job was especially challenging due to the public rumors about the case. His three daughters were mocked in school by their classmates, especially when the accusation that Taiji Men leader was allegedly raising goblins came out. 
Wang Dingcheng was also ridiculed by friends, relatives, and neighbor, neighbors. Now, here we're talking about discrediting someone as a consequence of association to a spiritual movement, which caused financial and emotional harm, not only to the defendant, but to his immediate family and association with family and friends as well. Freedom of speech, of course, goes to all parties. It is for, in this case, spiritual believers, as well as those who are against them. But the objective of the government is to create laws that protect citizens from becoming victimized or demonized. Taiji men is not an aggressive movement. Their spiritual beliefs do not harm society, nor does it harm those who do not believe it. But what is interesting in this case is that when government authorities, like the National Tax Bureau in this case, takes it upon itself to willingly, knowingly, and aggressively create an atmosphere of distrust against citizens through discrimination against some minority groups, against believers, then victims are created instead of protected. An environment of hatred can be created by the media, rumors, or government authorities. It is not only legally wrong, but morally as well. Here's another case of a man who had been the chief financial officer at Acer Technology before retiring. Chao Chin Chen had joined the Taiji men after being diagnosed with an incurable condition and began volunteering at the academy. When the tax bureau claims came in in 1996, he voluntarily went to Dr. Hong to the Taipei field office of the Bureau of Investigation. Despite having co uh, committed no crime, he was held in and interrogated continuously for the next 24 hours. During that time, he was handcuffed, refused food or sleep during that whole 24-hour period, 24 hour period. The next day, he was transferred to the Taipei District Pro uh, Prosecutor's Office and was then interrogated by Prosecutor Kwan Jian Hao. Hao tried to coerce him into testifying against Dr. Hong using intimidation and threats. Uh, Chao Chin, uh, Chin Chen refused to answer their threats. Four days later, the authorities searched his house and took him to the Taipei office of the Bureau of Investigation, where again, he was interrogated under inhumane conditions. They then detained him and kept him in Kumikado for the close to four months. He was then arraigned by Prosecutor Hao on the 7th and the 19th, uh, 16th of January, 1997, but his own lawyer had not been notified of either date. During this detention on January 1st, 1997, Prosecutor Hao threatened to have Cao Ji Chen, his wife, uh, his, uh, her income reduced. The threat meant that no one could take care of, the, of their two daughters, who were still in school, if they did not provide testimony against Dr. Hong. During the arraignment on 16th of January, he and his, uh, his wife began to, be, began to being held in another holding cell, and the prosecutor Hao threatened to detain her as well. When uh, Chao Chin Chen was detained, the prosecution leaked false information to the media, such as reports implying that the Ministry of uh, Justice officials were involved. Now, his wife worked as an editor in the Ministry of Justice, and so regrettably, she was forced into early retirement. Their two daughters were studying at the university at that time and were ridiculed and discriminated against due to this case. Their grades and well-beings uh, suffered. Later, it led them to, be cho to choose to study abroad and work abroad. Additionally, despite working as a chief financial office as well for a well-known company and being quite reputable in his field of work and having always had a good credit with banking institutions, his period of detention and his high public nature of the Chao Chin Chen trials re uh, re ruined his reputation. In this culture, reputation is everything. His livelihood and the trust of his friends and associates and dependents uh, depend all on it. 
All of this negativity impacted his mortgage agreement with his bank. He and his wife were forced to beg friends and family for financial assistance, but many were suspicious of them due to the negative media reports and were reluctant to give them a helping hand. They had no choice but to sell their house and repay the mortgage. The achievements that Chao Chin Chen had worked her heart through his, throughout his entire career to accomplish and his, and his reputation were all destroyed because of this inhumane right, rights, uh, this human rights viola violation case. Eventually, he received state comp uh, compensation for uh, wrongful imprisonment, but the damage done to him and his family was immeasurable. He passed away on July 7th. 2014. Again, we wonder to what extent can government agencies cause victims amongst the people they are supposed to serve with complete immunity? The abuse of the National Tax Bureau has lasted for almost a quarter of a century. I call upon the, tax to the Taiwan government to honor the law the sentences passed by its judges, and the moral responsibility it has to watch over and protect all its citizens equally, as determined by its own mandate. And by the way, why are we even having this conversation? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hans for your very comprehensive presentation on uh, this case. Uh, I can uh, let the audience know that uh, Mr. Chao Xin Chen's daughter is part of the, uh, this meeting today, and she will be giving uh, her testimony later on today during the second part of the uh, seminar. We can Looking now... forward to that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So we can now move to the next speaker, Mr. Thierry Val. Mr. Thierry Val is president of the coordination of association, associations of individuals and uh, associations for freedom of conscience, Association de Particulier pour la Liberté uh, de Conscience, CAPLC, France. Thierry, the floor is yours. Um, thank you. First of, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Cessnur and Human Rights Without Frontier, for inviting me to this seminar, which takes place on the International Day of Remembrance of Victims of Violence Based on Religious Belief. During this morning's seminar, Mr. Entrevi and Mr. Frutis spoke about how in Europe and more particularly in France, the misusing taxes have been used, as in the case of the Taiji Main to unjustly attack peaceful spiritual communities. We also filed in this topic a written statement to the 47th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council entitled Misusing Taxes Against Religious Freedom. In 1996, the then Taiwanese government launched a crackdown on groups labeled as Sijao or cults, which according to most scholars who have studied the incident was politically motivated. The crackdown also involved Tai Chi Man, also he had not taken political sides. In France, in the same year, 1996, the Parliamentary Commission of Inquiry established a blacklist of spiritual groups classified as cult. 172 groups were to criminalize and a policy of repression was instituted against this spiritual movement. Following this Parliamentary Commission of Inquiry, the Ministry of Justice published a circular in which it highlighted the tools that mag magistrates should use against association qualified as cult by the Commission. In number four of the circular, we can read breaches of general tax code and particular tax code. In the same year, the Ministry of Interior also published a circular to online possible accusations evolving the crime of tax evasion as a weapon to fight against cults. In the years that followed, it was the Jehovah Witnesses in 1997, the Religious Association of the Pyramid Temple in 1995, 
the Association of the Knife of the Golden Lotus in 1995, and the Evangelical Pentecostal Church of Besançon in 1996, which were attacked by the French tax services. All these associations were declared fraudulent by the tax services and condemned to heavy tax adjustments up to several million euros in the case of the Jehovah Witnesses. All those spiritual groups, after having exhausted all legal remedies in France, went to defend their cases before the European Court of Human Rights, where they were all successful. The European Court found against France in all these cases for violation of Article 9, right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion of the European Convention on Human Rights. I will focus here on the most representative case, so one of the Jehovah Witnesses. The French Association of Jehovah Witnesses asked that the tax exemption applicable to gifts and legacies to local or national associations established for the purpose of organizing and managing religious worship and authorized religious congregation continue to be applied to them after 1993 as it had happened for every year before that day. The authorities claimed that the French Association of Jehovah Witnesses had not submitted the declaration requested by the tax authorities, and it was subjected to an automatic taxation procedure in respect of end-to-end -end gift which had re received. It. The tax administration claimed that the end-to-end -end gift had been disclosed by the tax authorities in the course of the accounting audit to which it had been subjected. The term disclosing is a key word in the French administrative language dealing with taxes. It applies that the disclosure was a voluntary move by the association, which for the authorities mean that he had accepted to be taxed on the money he had received. In fact, it, it was not the case. The audit was not requested by the French Association of Jehovah Witnesses, but, way, but way, was imposed on them by the tax administration and could not be refused. Moreover, there is no legal obligation to disclose end-to-end -end gift to the tax administration. There was a clear manipulation of the administrative terminology corner of the French Association of Jehovah Witnesses, and he has appeared afterwards to kill them financially. It shows other similarity with the, with the Tangiment case. After having exhausted all legal means in France in 2005, the association decided to appeal to the European Court of Human Rights. In its judgment of the 13 June 2011, the European Court found a violation of Article 9, right to freedom of religion, noting that the supplementary tax bill at concerning the entirety of the manual scheme received by the association. Also, they represented the main source of its funding. Its operating resources having just been cut, it had no longer been able to guarantee its followers the free exercise of their religion in practical terms. By a judgment in the 5 July 2011, the court held that France had to cancel the supplemental tax bill and reimburse more than 4 million euros for the tax underly claim by the tax administration that the Association of Jehovah Witnesses had paid under coercion, plus 55,000 euros for cost and expenses. The judgment was issued French in French only. The European Court rendered similar decision in favor of the three other associations labeled as CUB and attacked by the French tax services. Unfortunately, we can notice that the same strategy has been used in France and Taiwan to arrest spiritual groups that disturb state or bureaucrats for various reasons. Enabled to find any fault or crime, the state deflected their own tax regulation in order to undermine peaceful movements such as Taiji Main in Taiwan. The French case decided by the European Court of Human Rights, however, may be a reason of hope for Taiji Main DZ. This shows that despite the fact that this is a long and difficult fight, it can be wrong. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thierry. Very interesting parallel between Taiwan and France and the Jehovah's Witnesses and Taijiman case. Indeed, the rule of law must be re-established in regards to the Taijiman case, tax case in Taiwan. Next speaker in the panel is Professor Kenneth Jacobson. Kenneth Jacobson is practice professor of law at Temple University, Philadelphia. Professor Jacobson, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And thank you for the invitation. And it's good seeing you and everyone else again uh, in this panel. Um, first, for the benefit of, uh, of uh, people who are looking and watching for the first time, uh, I'm not an academic who has studied the Taijiman case from afar. Uh, I've uh, been to Taiwan. I've uh, taught at the uh, National Taiwan University. I've testified before the legislative UN. I visited the control UN and met with the uh, director. Uh, I'm very familiar with the government process in Taiwan, uh, the people involved there, uh, and, and the Taiwanese people in general, and the government of Taiwan. I can't profess to know them personally if I did, we probably wouldn't have this problem uh, before us, but uh, I've made a lot of friends in Taiwan. Uh, and it's from that perspective and that background uh, that the Taijiman tax case caught my interest and has caused me and led me to want to remain involved uh, until it's over. Uh, those that are watching uh, and are not deeply familiar with the background of the tax case, may be looking at the uh, title of this conference uh, and wonder, you know, well, what does this have to do with uh, the International Day commemorating victims of acts of violence based on religion or freedom? You know, what acts, isn't this a tax case? Isn't this a money case? Isn't this a case about seized property? And the answer to that is no. The answer to that is a resounding no. As we have already heard, there were unspeakable acts of violence perpetrated against the DZ of Tai Chi Men during the course of the persecution. And I use the word persecution, not prosecution. And I'm a lawyer and I choose my words carefully. So during the, I'm a law professor and a lawyer. During the persecution, of Tai Chi Men, the interrogations, uh, the lost jobs, the emotional toll that takes on individuals when they can't feed their family, when they are no longer hold, uh, able to hold positions that they like because of their religious beliefs. Those are acts of violence. The emotional, I, I, I wrote down the words, the emotional scars uh, that were left and are left and continue and remain after decades, decades of trying to do what? Just achieve justice. Just have the rule of law with every court and every entity in Taiwan has ruled should be followed and should be enforced, and it has not been. The decades long pressure and stress of that kind of, of uh, just injustice is an act of violence. The most egregious act of violence to me, and I hate to rank them because I think they're all bad, was that perpetrated on Dr. Hong when he was imprisoned, when he was deprived proper clothing, when he was deprived blankets, when he was worried about his legs because they were freezing. That's not an act of violence. That's torture. That's worse than an act of violence. So make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. This panel is, about victims of acts of violence because uh, Dr. Hong 
and the DZ of Tai Chi Minh have suffered these acts of violence deliberately, intentionally, and for far too long. I, I would love to get into the mind as, again, a law professor and a lawyer. What I teach my students is don't believe everything that you believe, but levitate and try and think of the other side. Put yourself in the position of your opponent. Put yourself in the position of your adversary sitting across the table, whether it's a court case or a negotiation. Try and understand their perspective. Try and understand where they are coming from. And I guess where the government of Taiwan is coming from is, ah, we resolved five years. So that's good enough. One more year doesn't really matter. Pieces of property that were seized, you know what? Uh, we've resolved everything else, so this is your concession to us. No, that's not how justice works. Justice does not work that way. Unless there's complete relief, unless there's total relief, unless there is real adherence to the rule of law, then there is no justice. And it doesn't mean that there's a little bit of justice or some justice, it's all justice. Because it's a slippery slope when you say that this is enough. But I'm trying to understand why President Tsai and why the Taiwanese officials, because this is above rogue tax authorities now. You know, this really is. This is an issue, as I said, said before in these panels, that really needs to be addressed, should be addressed, and must be addressed at the highest level of government. You see the American flag behind and you know I'm American, and I thank you for holding this panel in English so I'm able to participate and understand. Taiwan is in a very um, precarious position right now. To ignore the threat of China is to ignore the obvious. To see the saber rattling that is going on with China, to read the, uh, the statements about reunification that is going on is very disturbing. It's very disturbing to me and it should be disturbing to everyone around the world. I think that, and as a country who has suffered through and is still suffering through the absolute chaos and the tragedy that's going on in Afghanistan, Make no mistake about it, that there are opportunists out there that will take advantage of perceived weakness and of political and even military instability. I believe that Taiwan at its highest level of government would want to make sure that its allies, including the United States and other countries around the world, view it through the prism of the democracy that it is. View it through the deep relations that we've had and will continue to have and the treaties that we have as a government that works fairly, properly for the people. I would not think that any government with this threat hanging over its head like a sword of Damocles would want to do things other than reflect the democratic ideals, goals, and adherence to the rule of law that are so important for a democracy. And with that, I would ask, as I've asked before, for the president of Taiwan and for others that are in positions of power to do the right thing to remove this blemish that remains on a very, very disturbing, unfair, illegal, unlawful case that should have been never brought in the first place, but has gone on far too long. And with a stroke of a pen could be eliminated and finally concluded. And I think that the government of Taiwan should do that. 
and they should do it now. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, Kenneth. Um, by just hoping that justice will prevail in the Taiji Man case in Taiwan, I now give the floor to Conrad Zweninger, founder of Soteria International, spiritual human rights organization based in Denmark and operating worldwide. Conrad, the floor is yours for the second part of this seminar. Thank you very much, uh, Anikareli. It's an honor to be with you and with all the others. Thank you for these strong speeches from with so much power and knowledge. And thank you from the beginning with uh, Lactos Sweat to include this Wycliffe uh, quotation because indeed transparency and knowledge through that civil society is creating the justice and the society that we want. It is not done, society is not created by the priests at that time or by the kings or even today by the governments, but by us. Those practitioners who stand up by their rights and the advocates of human rights to back them up. And thank you so much for inviting me for this. I will uh, introduce this round table of uh, speakers who will witness from the Taiwan perspective itself. And I find it very valuable because as it says in the Western Christian tradition, you know the fruit, you know the tree by its fruits. So it's very valuable to actually hear those who are part of it to, to know how does this influence their life. Also, because today being the day of commemoration of the victims of violence is very, we already heard these very touching stories of the great price that has to be paid or is paid when, as Professor Jacobson pointed out, it goes towards persecution. And these emotional scars, the social marginalization, the stigmatization, this indeed is violence. We also know, we heard of like, uh, physical violence. This We all heard about this in the mainland China, but similar acts of violence are also taking place in democratic countries. We know it from Europe. We know it from around the world, from our organization. We even have within the European Union a case where one Supreme uh, Court, National Supreme Court, uh, gives asylum to one of the other countries, member states, for religious persecution where violence was a part of that. It's something that is ongoing and it's so valuable that you in Taiji men stand up, even if yes, it's a financial issue, maybe you could resolve it and go further, but you continue to stand up for the continuing the talk, continuing the discussion until it's fully resolved as been pointed out by many of the previous speakers. So thank you for this arrangement and thank you for all the fellow speakers. Now, towards those who truly can witness about it, we will start with a video. I have been told, and I look much forward to it, the story of also, please uh, excuse my probably misinterpretation or miss, um, how do you say, not saying it correctly, many of the Taiwanese names. I will do my very best and I hope it will be understandable. So, we will start off with the story of Kao Siung Academy. And let us have a look at that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's program. On December 19, 1996, the fabricated Taijuman case called the Law and Tax 228 incident by scholars and experts began. The Control Yuan investigated Prosecutor Ho Kuan-ren's handling of the Taijiman case and found he had committed eight major violations of the law, and the case was sent to the Ministry of Justice for disciplinary action against Ho. This case was chosen as a major human rights protection case in the General Report and the Work of Human Rights Protection of the Control Yuan from 1999 to 2005. 
it has been confirmed that serious violations of human rights occurred during the case and investigation process. The false Taijiman case should never have existed in the first place, and it should never have resulted in illegal taxation or auctions. The case has lasted for 25 years. For the past quarter century, a world-renowned ancient spiritual group that practices qigong and martial arts has been harassed, and the matter has yet to be resolved. Let us now listen to their stories. In 1988, a Tai Chi Man Academy was established in a shopping center in Kaohsiung. It was a good place for disciples in southern Taiwan to practice Qigong and a sweet home for them. When I first stepped into this academy, although the place was small, it was full of joy and laughter. After doing Tai Chi Men, every day after class, I would wait for my parents to take my brother and me to Tai Chi Men. I would practice Qigong with other members. It was a place where we could relieve our stress. Shifu always leads by example. After leading us to practice Qigong, Shifu would always talk about life philosophy and tell stories. At that time, the academy was always filled with laughter. Some would practice Qigong, while some would chat with one another. Many people wanted to join Tai Chi Men. I had cancer and was seriously ill. My health started to improve after I practiced Tai Chi Men Qigong for about three months. Tai Chi Men is a big family, and everyone here practices Qigong in peace and harmony. Stormy 1996 On December 19, 1996, the Taiwanese government launched a religious crackdown and Tai Chi Men was caught in the crossfire. Prosecutor Ho Kuan Ren abused his power and illegally prosecuted Tai Chi Men, causing significant damage to our home. The 1219 incident was really a big blow to us, and what was reported on TV was not what I saw in Tai Chi Men. Because we're such a good group, our Shifu only teaches us what is good, right, and true. Prosecutor Ho directed the searches and interrogations of investigators and armed police officers. He also slandered Tai Chi Men by falsely accusing them of raising goblins. Regarding the allegation of raising goblins in the indictment, the control yuan solemnly stated that the prosecutor openly talked about the supernatural in the indictment. This was the first time in Taiwanese judicial history that something like this had happened. It was appalling and absurd, and it had seriously harmed the prestige of the justice system. Prosecutor Ho's action was illegal, robbed the people of their property, and hurt innocent people. It harmed our sweet home and hampered the self-cultivation of many of our brothers and sisters. Every time I think about it, my heart aches. The prosecutor and police arrested a brother, and he was pale and trembling all over. Even my family members misunderstood me, and my relatives and friends refused to interact with me. The indictment and the evidence contradicted each other, according to the Control Yuan's investigation report, and the prosecutors bringing the public prosecution clearly broke the rule of evidence. During the Control Yuan's probe, Prosecutor Ho also stated that he did not actually investigate this matter. This proves that the Taijuman case was fabricated from the beginning. His smear campaign has done a lot of damage to Taijuman Shifu and Dizi. This indictment was both a national and international embarrassment. It is not due process to accuse a human being in a civilized society of raising goblins. The mere statement of that would cause individuals and should cause individuals to question the sanity of the prosecutor. In any court of law, such an absurd allegation would be thrown out. I 
I firmly believe that Taijiman is a great place. We must defend it. The Taijiman case is an unjust case. The fabricated indictment is in violation of evidence law. By law, the case should not have been prosecuted, and the indictment cannot be used as a basis for taxation. However, the criminal court accepted the case, and after thorough investigations and trials spanning ten years and three months, the Supreme Court declared Taijiman not guilty of tax evasion or any other charges on July 13, 2007. It was illegal for the National Taxation Bureau to issue tax bills based on the indictment. When the Supreme Court declared Taijiman not guilty, affirming that it owed no taxes, it reaffirmed that the indictment was completely improper. Therefore, by law, the tax bill issued based on the indictment should have been revoked in accordance with the court decision. However, the NTB ignored the court's decision and continued to issue illegal tax bills to Taijiman. This case has dragged on for 25 years, spanning several presidencies. Still, no government official came forward to admit their mistakes and accept responsibility. During the legislative yuan's public hearing on June 17, 2010, the Ministry of Finance and the NTB of the Central Area openly agreed to withdraw the enforcement and end the Taijiman unjust tax case within two months. But they broke their promise, and the case has yet to be resolved. On August twenty-first, twenty twenty, Taijiman's sacred land in Miaoli was illegally auctioned and confiscated. The Taijiman Academy on Lainan Street, Kaohsiung, was twice seized and banned from being disposed of. The building was seized for a prolonged period of time. We couldn't maintain or manage it since we didn't have access to it. As a result, all the valuable items were stolen. Tears welled up in my eyes as I entered the academy, which had been destroyed. Kenneth Jacobson, professor of law at Temple University in Philadelphia, United States of America, and former advisor to President Bill Clinton, after studying the case for years, pointed out. I teach my students, and I lecture around the world about how important the rule of law is. And there is no, and was no, application of the rule of law in the Taijiman tax case. I call upon the president of Taiwan. I call upon the leaders of Taiwan to fix the mistakes of the past. As I have said before, to allow errors to continue, to perpetuate mistakes that were made in the past, is as bad, if not worse, than committing those mistakes in the first place. This is a travesty. Travesty. It is a tragedy too. It is unjust. And as someone who respects and has lived his life and career respecting the law, rule of law. This is offensive, and it should end. And it should end now. Thank you very much. When Judge Zhang asked Shifu to present his statement, Shifu stated that he would use his life to defend Taijiman and his disciples. Shifu was only released during court sessions after being detained for a long time. A journalist asked Shifu, "What do you plan to do in the future?" Shifu replied, "I will continue to teach my disciples to cultivate their hearts and moral character as long as they do not leave." Shifu later told us to treat this society and this country with sincerity, diligence, tolerance, and peace. I admire Shifu's immense love and compassion even more. I am very grateful for Shifu's and his wife's perseverance. Since Sifu is doing the right thing, along the way, I heard Sifu's teachings and saw his examples. No matter how many difficulties and challenges Sifu faces, he always leads his disciples to overcome the obstacles one by one. Sifu and his disciples share one goal in mind: we will certainly protect this brightly lit home. Taijiman 
Taijiman has visited every populated continent, promoting the concept of love and peace through cultural exchanges. The fabricated Taijiman case should not have existed from the beginning, let alone the illegal taxation and illegal auctions. The case has dragged on for 25 years. This is a landmark case of human rights in the century, which is relevant to the development of Taiwan's democracy and rule of law. Taijiman Shifu and Dizi will always insist on upholding the truth and justice. Taiwan's commitment to transitional justice and human rights protection has been put to the test in this 25-year case of blood and tears. According to scholars and experts, the ratification of the Taijiman case is a litmus test for the government's transitional justice, as well as its implementation of human rights protection and freedom of thought and belief. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Taijiman, for producing this video that not only explains the, the story and the operation of persecution in this case, but also lets us recognize so much humanity. And um, sooner or later, we also need to ask ourselves, how come these movements globally, who actually work for the well-being and health and development and cultivation of the humane, are actually prosecuted? Thank you very much for this touching video. And uh, we will move now to the um, contribution of Dr. Shun Xie Yuang, Professor of Department of Financial and Economic Law at the National Chungcheng University in Taiwan. He's a former member of the Presidential Office Human Rights Consultative Committee and specialized in constitution law, administration law, tax law, and international two covenants. He has also been visiting a uh, visiting scholar at the Max Planck Institute for tax law and public finance in Germany. He is indeed a pioneer in the protection of taxpayers' rights in Taiwan. So Dr. Chun Xie Huan, from my miss uh, saying, but still, let's hear it. Today is the International Day commemorating the victims of acts of violence based on religion or belief. Everywhere in the world, we witness different religions persecuted by the state power. It is my privilege today to share with you some of the cases of religion's persecutions and some of my personal works. Hopefully, I can shed some light on discussions in this forum. About 30 years ago, I was teaching in National Defense University when we discussed Article 13 of Taiwan's constitution about religion's freedom, we presented some religion's persecutions as cases discussions in class. As the students are military judges, they share with me cases in the military. I wrote an article based upon the stories they share with me and published it in Journal of Legal Studies in Taiwan. The article got widespread feedbacks. The case is about Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses refuses to serve military services in Germany. In Germany, civilians have the right to refuse to serve military services. So their rejection of military service is legally sound. But they also refuse to serve the substitute military services. However, the Federal Constitutional Court ruled against them in the opinion that substitute military service does not require carrying any weapons. Therefore, civilians cannot reject the request of substitute military services. I had some discussions with Jehovah's Witnesses and understood why they reject to serve military services. They believe that military services with weapons will likely be dragged into war by the state, and this is against their religion's belief. During the martial law period, we had crime of disobedience, which could be sentenced up to seven years in prison. A Jehovah's Witness believer reported to the military, but refused to do his services. 
he asked to be sentenced for crime of disobedience rather than wearing uniforms and performing military drills. As he wished, he was charged and sentenced seven years. Back then, in order to stop your military service, you have to be sentenced seven years, and above, and held in jail for at least four years. He accepted the ruling out of his religion's belief. But when he did three and a half years, the martial laws was lifted, and a commutation law was enacted. So he was out of after three and a half years. As he did not do four four years in prison, he had to do his military services. He protested against the commutation, but his protest was rejected by the court, as the commutation was in his favor. So he left the prison with deep pain, because his religion's belief was not honored. He reported to the military and refused to do his military service again. So he was again sentenced seven years and sent back to jail. Time passes, and he did three and a half years. Now it is the first ever presidential election in Taiwan. So another commutation was made, and he was released from jail again. Of course. He protested against the commutation and was rejected again. The case is to share with you that we are not in the position to tell what is good or bad to a religious person. What we consider good for him might not be indeed good for him from his religion's perspective. I would like to report to you on the following in particular. A religion's or spiritual movement knows best about its own essence and the core of its most essential principles. The formation of a religion's or cultural organization is usually preceded by the country's constitution. As a result, our constitution or rule of law should honor this, and we should respect the religion's organization as well as its roots and nature. Back to the case of Taijiman. For the common people, a piece of land is just property right. But for a religious group, a piece of land reserved for their holy religious practice is more than just a piece of land. It is their holy land. In some cases, the holy land is even worth dying for. Taijiman has always been our national pride. Due to our political situations, we have been denied access to many international organizations. Thanks to Taijiman civilian diplomacy, we have established positive relationships with many nations around the world, and Taijiman has received widespread supports from religions and political leaders. After the two international covenants legalizing Taiwan. We have confirmed for the first time that property right is more than just the exchange of value or compensation. We now accept that the land and property could be the basis upon which life can be sustained. Therefore, we look at the ruling for tax year 1992, and we have to think that this is more than just violation of property rights. It is the violation of cultural and religious right. I would like to take this opportunity to urge international experts to remind the responsible government authorities to treat the case as a violation of universal human rights. We hope the voices of Taijiman will be heard. Thank you so much for this, and、um, we will move now to the next recorded testimony. Uh, which is from Mr. Kang Shiju, who is a Taiwanese politician and legislator from 2009 to 12, 2012. After that, Mr. Kang was twice re-elected as mayor of Shunan Town in Maoli Country County in Taiwan. In 2010. 
When Tai Chi Men submitted their petition to me, I was a convener of the Finance Committee in the Legislative Yuan. I accepted their petition and then studied the documents carefully. It was obvious that there was something wrong with our bureaucratic system. The nature of the income in the administrative disputes is the same for the six years in question. However, the income was not taxable for five of the six years, but was subject to taxes and penalties for one of the years. Hence, I immediately accepted their case and organized a public hearing in the legislative yuan. At that time, I also communicated very clearly with Mr. Li Shude, the then Minister of Finance, who also understood very clearly that there was indeed too much negligence and too many mistakes by the government officials involved in this case. At the time, when we held the public hearing, Mr. Li very clearly said that the time frame was two months, asking our National Taxation Bureau. Of the central area to submit the documents to the Ministry of Finance, and we were about to revoke the compulsory enforcement on the 1992 tax bill. However, after two months, even to this day, the case has not been settled yet. It is unbelievable. Even a three-year-old kid would know that for an income of the same nature, how could it be not taxable? For five of the six years, but taxable for just one year, there is a Taiwanese saying: "It is a no-brainer. This is a bogus case." When they had a chance to close the case, the chance to rectify the injustice, why didn't they do it? The then finance minister Li Shude obviously knew that this was basically a travesty. Then why did the bureaucrats not let it go? It is totally unbelievable. The whole case has spanned the periods when there have been changes of power between the KMT and the DPP, so this has nothing to do with the political parties. Frankly speaking, I can say with confidence that this is entirely about a few bureaucrats hijacking the government. Hence, the whole government was tied up and unable to act. Such hijacking of government. Is not only the problem of the Ministry of Finance. I believe this problem exists commonly, and similar issues can be seen in other government agencies. Tai Chi Men members have been working so hard and diligently to rectify their case. I think their persistent efforts are not only for their own tax case, but for the realization of transitional justice. For all other cases, through the Taijiman case, we hope that the government will conduct a thorough review in a truly prudent manner to prevent the government from being hijacked by a few rogue bureaucrats, and to restore fairness and justice. There is no more need for the government to talk about human rights when it is handling such a simple and clear case in this way. What is the point for it to talk about transitional justice and human rights? We don't want this case to reveal to the international community that the human rights and democracy that the Taiwanese government claims to uphold are in fact bogus. Why can I clearly indicate that our rogue bureaucrats have hijacked the government? It's because there are many administrators, people in power. And representatives of the people, who are indeed not professionals and probably are not familiar with regulations and rules, when they are not familiar with the rules, they will be easily hijacked by those bureaucrats. In fact, for many incidents, we can use our own judgment to clearly determine whether they are reasonable. I used to work as an arbitrator. And have handled many petition cases. In some instances, officers in the local government think differently from those in the central government. Sometimes, local officers.
did not want to take responsibility, so they would twist the rules, and the situation would become even more harsh and inhumane. So I am hoping that the Taijiman case would inspire those in power, and let them realize that we need a mechanism to solve these cases of injustice. Honestly, I think the Control Yuan is a useless paper tiger. They would usually respond late and apply topical treatment after the victims had perished. No wonder so many bureaucrats dare to abuse their authority for personal gains. We can clearly see why these bureaucrats handled the Taijiman case in this way. Their behavior reflected their desire for bonuses and shirking responsibility. As I previously stated, this situation has lingered to this day due to the wrongdoing of these bureaucrats and their dysfunctional mentality. I believe the genuine remedy is like what Dr. Hong at Taijiman suggested. People should begin by following their conscience. I believe that if every government official can begin with their conscience. We would have a great nation, and will be very happy and content on every level. Now the Control Yuan and Legislative Yuan are advocating human rights campaigns. This is absurd to me when I consider it. They couldn't even handle the Taijiman case, which involved grave human rights violations. How do they think they'll be able to talk about human rights and handle human rights cases? The control yuan needs to reflect on itself again. For so many petition cases, what have they done to handle those parts related to human rights? Have the legislators really raised their voices for those unjust cases? Their talk on human rights is merely lip service, which I do not respect. Control yuan members and legislators, no matter what your political party is, I would admire if you could put an end to such a clear and simple case. I'll be convinced that the transitional justice you are talking about is really related to human rights. This is my ultimate call. Both Control Yuan and Legislative Yuan, please work harder, not just provide lip service. You promise something, and then you say you don't know anything about it. What you say is scary, and what you do is ridiculous. I think this is not what we would like to see. Please work harder, everyone. 大家加油。Thank you very much for this again touching and、uh, precise. The the call for conscience to actually be there and the reasonability of of the decisions. We must remember that Tajimen have been freed from all the accusations. Just the rectification has not been carried out. And also, thank you for bringing up the operationality of the UN if it's really there, and whether that should be maybe addressed even deeper. We will、um, now go to live testimonies, and、uh, later on we have another recorded testimony that even indicates that the whole Tajiman case is a、uh, frame、um, that they are framed through Prosecutor Ho. And、uh, before that, we will now move to Miss Phyllis Huang, who is a certified public accountant、um, in California. Um, uh, and specialized in U.S. tax, she is also the president of the Paramitas Foundation, which was launched with a mission to support universities and environmental and community service organizations. She is also a volunteer in Taijiman Shigong Academy to promote Chinese culture and spread the message of love and peace to the world. The floor is yours, yours, Mrs. Wang. Thank you. First, I like to introduce myself. My name is Phyllis. I'm the president of the Pyramidas Foundation, and I'm also a certified public accountant in California. I joined Tai Chi Men in 2001 when the Tai Chi Men San Jose chapter was founded. It has helped me to improve my physical, mental, and spiritual health. I am an American citizen. And in the United States, citizens are granted several basic rights 
through the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The most basic freedoms are dictated through the First Amendment, which guarantees the freedom of speech, press, and religion. These are so basic and should be guaranteed in all corners of the world. However, as we will shortly see, this is not the case. Tai Chi Man case is in Taiwan shows a revolting violation of the First Amendment, especially a violation of the freedom of religion. The Tai Chi Man case began in 1996 when the Taiwanese government cracked down on religions and spiritual groups for political reasons. Although Tai Chi Man did not take a political side, it was caught in the crossfire. The Tai Chi Man's grandmaster, Dr. Hong, his wife, and other members were illegally arrested for fraud and tax evasion with no evidence. In 2007, the Supreme Court of Taiwan declared that Tai Chi Man, Dr. Hong, and other defendants were free of fraud, tax evasion, and any tax delinquency. They were even awarded state compensation for unjust detention. However, the National Taxation Bureau, like the IRS in the States, still imposed illegal tax bills for 1991 to 1996 on us without any evidence. In 2010, the Ministry of Finance promised to resolve the case within two months at a public hearing in the Taiwan Legislative Yen. But the case is still outstanding now. In 24 years, Tai Chi Man has won administrative relief litigation 18 times. In 2019, they recognized the mistakes they made previously and reversed all the tax bills to zero, except for 1992's tax bill. Actually, the nature of tax bills through the years, they are all the same, but they refuse to revoke the tax bill of 1992. We refuse the settlement and they auctioned off our sacred land last year, which is intended for the spiritual practice in the future. I am a certified public accountant and have worked in the taxation for over 30 years in the United States. I believe that Tai Chi Man case is also a violation of taxpayer rights from a tax law perspective. In 2014, the IRS adopted a Taxpayer Bill of Rights as proposed by the former national taxpayer advocate, Nina Olsen, which applies to all taxpayers in their dealings with IRS. The Taxpayer Bill of Rights grouped the existing rights in the tax code into 10 fundamental rights and makes them clear, understandable, and accessible. These rights include the rights to be informed, to pay no more than the correct amount of tax, the right to challenge the position of IRS and the, to be heard, and the right to a fair, just tax system, among others. From the Taxpayer Bill of Rights stated above, you can see that Taiwan's National Tax Bureau has seriously violated multiple aspects of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. In particular, when the court declared that Tai Chi Man was innocent of any tax debt, the National Tax Bureau ignored the court's ruling and still issued illegal tax bills. I'm so honored to be a Tai Chi Man disciple, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be part of the family. My Shifu, Dr. Hong, has always taught us to distinguish between right and wrong, true and false. Today, it is very clear that Tai Chi Man case is indeed a false case made out of nothing. Therefore, we refuse the, set, the compromise and we must uphold our justice. We must educate the officials who persecute us and we must persevere to the end to avoid persecution and to help others see our innocence. Despite all the persecution we have suffered, Dr. Hong has not stopped leading us to spread love and peace to every corner of the world and to awaken the hearts and conscience of the people. Up to today, Dr. Hong has led his disciples to visit 101 countries and more than 300 cities. And through more than 3,000 cultural exchange events, 
such as the World Leaders Summit on Love and Peace and the World Love and Peace Bell Ringing Ceremony to promote peace, conscious, and human rights and to enhance mutual respect and understanding. So far, 122 countries and 399 war heads of state and leaders from various fields have run the World Love Peace Bell, which includes 43 heads of states and governments, seven Nobel Prize winners, United Nations ambassador and leaders from various countries. I have been an immigrant from Taiwan to United States for over 30 years. And Tai Chi Minh is like a second family to me. When I face the low point of in my life, I have the guidance and encouragement from Shifu, the care and support by my brothers and sisters. Shifu always remind me to face life with courage and optimism, to learn the truth, to improve myself and to help others. For me, Tai Chi Minh is not only a safe haven, but also an energy supply station. I hope that our voice will be heard and the Taiwan government will correct the mistake made by a few officials. Just like Professor Kenneth Jackson, an advisor, an, an advisor to former US President Bill Clinton and professor at Temple University said in the Freedom of Religion Summit in Washington DC in July. It is never too late to correct mistakes. I hope that Taiwanese government will take this case seriously, stop persecuting Tai Chi men, and return the confiscated land to us. Taiwan is also my home country. I hope Taiwan will become a true democracy where human rights and religious freedom are protected in Taiwan. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for your testimony and for bringing up these things. And indeed, your way of standing for uh, your Shifu's, Dr. Hong's teachings, I think maybe in the end, will also spread the word so much more in the world. We already have gotten to know these teachings. And indeed, I was also caught very much by Professor Jacobson's statement that not correcting um, the, the continuation, that not connect, correcting the mistakes you do might be an equally big crime, maybe bigger. And so thank you very much for this. And now we go further to Ms. Uh, Li Xue Tsai. You have a master's degree in education in Maharishi International University, mm -hmm. USA. You also teach um, language and European decorative painting. Uh, you hosted official events in the Taipei representative office in the Netherlands. and enjoyed the work at the Royal Delft serving the Dutch national treasure. So far, Ms. Tsai has traveled 30 countries and is also a volunteer and attends often international conferences of human rights and at the UN NGO conferences. The floor is yours, Ms. Tsai. Thank you. Thank you, Conrad. Hello, everyone. I'm Lisha Tsai and I have lived in the United States and the Netherlands for nearly 30 years. Thanks, youth. I had been sick. Uh, my days were filled with injections and medicines. So having been searching for a permanent cure for my illness all my life, I finally became a Tai Chi Man Dizi in 2015. My shifu Dr. Hong Daozi told me to let go of my attachments and get rid of my bad temper. Body, mind, and soul are interconnected. After practicing Tai Chi Man Qigong, I have regained perfect health. I'm very grateful to Dr. Hong. I'm willing to follow my shifu to practice self-cultivation, to learn to distinguish between right and wrong, true and false, good and bad, and to manifest the fairness and justice of the innate human rights. While living in the Netherlands, a people-oriented country, I've experienced the cultivation of human rights education starts from a young age. Since my daughter's first grade till her high school, Almost every year, her teachers took her and her classmates to the House of Representatives of the Dutch Parliament in The Hague to listen to the parliamentary questioning, and then went back to the classroom to do group exercises on it. They learned human rights, critical thinking, 
and speak out for their opinions and propositions. Dutch government, the Ministry of Education, society, schools, and families all value human rights education. Human rights education is a lifetime education, a basic quality of being human. Being a Tai Chi Man Dizi, I've learned compassion, bravery, and true wisdom from my Shifu. After learning about the Tai Chi Man's unjust case and the sufferings of the Taiwanese victims of taxpayers' human rights, I realized that Taiwan government disregards human rights and that Taiwanese people must be self-reliant. People must unite to urge the government to perform its duties. Coveting job promotion and bonuses, a few officials in Taiwan used public power and the tax laws to frame and persecute Tai Chi Man for 25 years. But the Taiwan government neglected it. If a government keeps silent about the persecution committed by its officials, it is an accomplice. It was a proof that Taiwan's complete failure on human rights and rule of law education, which in 1996 prosecuted Ho Kuan Ren, prosecute Tai Chi Man by using an addictment of raising goblins. On December 19, 1996, the government violated the principle of secret investigation and allowed the media, accompanied by Prosecutor Ho, to film the search in the Tai Chi Man academies. A lawsuit before it was filed was publicized immediately. Global Taiwanese people believed the media statements what does this phenomenon mean? This means the Taiwanese people do not have knowledge of law and human rights literacy to do critical thinking so that prosecutor Ho and the media could use public opinion to lead the case. Those incapable of, criti those incapable of critical thinking have no more moral courage to come forward to protest. This also means that Taiwan government feeds its people of education of fools. It only informs the government's rights and people's obligations, but does not inform the government's obligations and people's rights. On July 13, 2007, the Supreme Court ruled that the Tai Chi Man was not guilty and did not owe any tax. Tai Chi Man Shifu and Di Zi who were illegally detained also received compensation for unjust detentions and convictions from the state. All illegal tax bills should have been revoked and this case should have been over. But Taiwan's Taxation Bureau continued to impose unjustified taxes on Tai Chi Man. At the end of June, 2020, when the Administrative Enforcement Agency of the Ministry of Justice announced that an auction of Tai Chi Man Shifu and Dizi's pre-reserved pre lands for building dojo. Based on human rights, I joined the protests in different cities of Taiwan. For several months, every morning, noon, and afternoon, we Tai Chi Man Dizi went to the Xinzhu branch of the Administrative Enforcement Agency to hold protest banners and hand out flyers. While fighting silently and peacefully, we promoted knowledge of law and tax and educated people to face up to taxpayers' human rights. During this period, we applied for legal right of way assemblies and procession, uh, processions for 19 times, but they were never approved by the Xinzhu city government. The temperature during the summer in Taiwan is almost above 39 degrees Celsius. Besides Xinzhu, I also went to the Shiling branch of the Taipei Administrative Enforcement Agency and the Ministry, Ministry of Finance to do protests in Dutch for the Tai Chi Man case with other deeds. At noon, we were exposed to the big sun and sweated profusely. In the afternoon, we were baptized by heavy rain. Our clothes, shoes, and whole body were soaked with sweat and rain. In the evening, we went home to dry them so the next morning we could once again go to the administrative enforcement agency. We hope to recall the conscience of those illegal officials and hope that they will stop auctioning Tai Chi Man's lands. Unex unexpectedly, on July 31st and August 21st, after the administrative enforcement agency failed to auction Tai Chi Man's lands twice illegally, 
they let the lands to be confiscated by the government. While live streaming in English at the auction place, I witnessed Taiwan's democracy, rule of law, and human rights being abused and raped by public power. Taiji Mandizi roared in rage for the injustice, their sorrow at their property being robbed by the government, their despair of appealing to justice and seeing democracy and human rights being trampled, having left an imprint on my heart. Or a person like me, living in the Netherlands where human rights and the rule of law are highly valued, what I experienced on August 21st in Taiwan hurt me so much that I was speechless. After that, with other Tai Chi Mandizi, I went on Catalan, Catalan Boulevard three times within one month and held protest marches with about 10,000 people in front of the Taiwan's presidential office with law and tax experts and scholars. But the mainstream media in Taiwan did not report this incident. Taiwan's democracy, rule of law, freedom of speech, and human rights no longer exist. On September 19th, 2020, I witnessed a 60 year old volunteer of Fight for Fair Tax Alliance who was taken away by the police as a criminal because she raised a protest poster on the street. This volunteer who has always been awarded for good deeds was rushed to the hospital that night due to great mental stress where she was diagnosed with acute stress disorder. That night I swore to myself, I will tell this world about what happened that night. Isn't Taiwan a beacon of democracy in Asia? Why would I personally experience this series of incidents of bullying people and persecuting human rights in my beloved mother country? The Taiwan government has a control yuan and a national human rights commission but they have done nothing to the violations of the Tai Chi Man case. The media were forbidden to report anything regarding the case. Didn't Ms. Chen Ju, chairwoman of the National Human Rights Commission, expect the commissioners to protect Taiwanese people, manifest social justice, and be the conscience of Taiwan? Why is Tai Chi Man in Taiwan treated as a group of dumb people raped by public power. Tai Chi Mandizi will not tolerate the bullying of injustice. We will continue to appeal to the international community until this unjust case is rectified. This is not only a fight for the Tai Chi Man case, but for the innate human rights belonging to every Taiwanese. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Tsai, for this, and indeed for every Taiwanese and for all of us, uh, the same mechanism we recognize from other. And the more we unite these threads, the more stronger the picture will be that we still have people with, like you say, you came into it for meeting a holistic health, for self-cultivation, for becoming a proper human, and through that to contribute to a world where human rights are respected and also upheld by each and every one of us. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. And we will move further now with this uh, recorded testimony. It is um, a testimony of uh, Xi Yong Sheng, who in 1997, the prosecutor Ho requested this tax collector who had never worked with any case related to the Taiji men uh, to give a false testimony and claim that Taiji Man is actually a cram school and had used this spirituality and the red envelopes to, to commit fraud, to hide. Um, this testimony of Xi became the sole testimony in the indictment that supported the violation of the Tax Collection Act. Here is a video that the journalist um, who interviewed Xi a few years ago, and it shows clearly that in the prosecution of uh, Ho 
is based on a framing act through this testimony. That's very interesting. Let's see it. So thank you for bringing this uh, quite uh, shocking testimony uh, where the interviewed uh, crown witness, so to say, uh, testifies it to, to be a setup, a direct setup. Also, in other cases, we have come across how this willingness to follow orders in different ways within a system shows how corruption and uh, discrimination can continue even within a system that else would abide to rule of law. And um, uh, thank you again for bringing this testimony to us to shed light on this. 
We will now move to the testimony of Ms. Brenda Chen, who has earned a Master of Fine Arts degree in illustration from Savannah College of Art and Design. She is an experienced illustrator and graphic designer in the Bay Area, and she has the visualization talent to see the big picture and then go into the details to fulfill the project goals. So Ms. Chen, she's also a volunteer and has participated to several NGO conferences. The floor is yours. Hi, Connor. Uh, thank you, Connor. Hi, everyone. My name is Brenda Chen. I'm also Taoxin Chen's daughter. I moved to the United States 18 years ago, partly to pursue the American dream, but mostly to escape the nightmare caused by prosecutor Ho Kwan Ren. When my dad was a child, his parents passed away. His life was full of pain and hardships. After practicing Qigong and cultivating his heart at Tai Chi Man, he gradually regained his health and happiness. My mom, my sister, and I all benefited from his improvement because after he found his peace of mind, he became a wiser person and even, and even gained a sense of humor. In 1996, without any investigation or evidence, Prosecutor Ho used the media to create a false image that Tai Chi Man was an evil religious group that deceived people. Prosecutor Ho abused his power and detained Shi Fu, Shi Mu, and two other deeds. My dad was one of them. Because of smear campaign, Tai Chi Man became a subject of gossip. Every day is wearing a Tai Chi Man uniform, received disapproving looks on the streets. My dad's career and reputation were ruined, causing us great emotional and financial loss. On Christmas Eve in 1996, there was no peace in my family. Even though my dad was not indicted, he was detained and could not communicate with others for four months by the prosecutor. My dad was the anchor of my family was suddenly not there for us. We felt very insecure. Our house was searched and the tape recordings I made for English learning were damaged by the investigators. We were scared and didn't know when my dad would be able to come home. Because the prosecutor could not find any evidence, he subjected my dad to hunger, fatigue, and threat hoping to extract a testimony from my dad against Shi Fu. He threatened to detain my mom so that my sister and I would be without parental care at home. He was trying to force a fake confession from my dad, from my dad. My dad followed his conscience and told the truth, saying Shi Fu's Kung Fu is real. The prosecutor was very angry and stained my dad's detention by two months without any just fire reason. While my dad was beating tent, my uncles blamed my mom. She had difficulty in explaining to them what was going on. My sister even received a threatening note at school that said, don't ever think your family could avoid a trial. Before retirement, my mom was the chief, my dad was the chief financial officer of a large company and had an outstanding reputation. Because the prosecutor's illegal investigation, his reputation was totally ruined. Two or three days after my dad was released on bail, the bank called in our loan. It was impossible for my parents to make ends meet only on my mom's salary. My dad had to ask our relatives for help. However, because of negative news reporting on Tai Chi Man, they were not willing to help us and may even mock my dad. In the end, my dad had to sell the house. Years later, my dad received national compensation for unlawful imprisonment. But nothing could ever compensate for our pain and suffering from this incident. As a result, because of negative and false newspaper reports, my mom who worked at the Ministry of Justice 
was under a lot of pressure and was forced to retire early. My sister and I went overseas, intending to leave a heartbreaking place behind us. My sister went to France and I came to the United States. Seven years ago, my dad passed away with regret. Before he had a chance to see the address of the Tai Chi Man case. Fortunately, my mom, my sister, and I, still practicing Qigong at Tai Chi Man, a perfect place for our self cultivation. Tai Chi Man is our second home, which Shifu provides for all these. It is work, and we feel love and a sense of belonging. I grant for the Shifu for establishing academies in the United States. Our Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters are like my siblings, who show sincere love and care for me. Although my family members now live in different parts of the world, we are all Tai Chi Man deeds and united in heart. We stay determined to protect Tai Chi Man, to her hope, the truth, and safeguard religious freedom. Because of Tai Chi Man, our spiritual home is much stronger. In July, I attended the International Religious Freedom Summit 2021 in Washington, D.C. The former ambassador, Sam Brownback, said, the charter that we put forward for this summit is a broad best charter for all faces, for people of no faith at all. But it's about protecting their right of freedom of belief or conscience, and that this is a, this is a fundamental human right. And we have the dignity of a person to be able to choose whatever their future looks like for ourselves and not have it for, be forced or coerced by anybody else or by our government. We believe the government's role is to protect that innate right of a person to select their own course or future for their soul. I never thought that one day I will represent the victims of Tai Chi Man case, giving account of our suffering in the past 25 years to the world. When I stood in front of the United States Supreme Court building, a place where the decisions made must be obeyed by all officials, organizations in the government. My heart was filled with mixed emotions. Taiwan is the beacon of democracy of Asia. Yet the illegal indulgence of a few officials trampled the dignity of Taiwan's Supreme Court. In 2007, the Taiwan Supreme Court ruled that Tai Chi Man was not guilty of fraud or tax evasion. The taxation bureau should revoke the illegal tax bills. But few world officials ignored the rulings and maintained the tax bills to make the matter worse. That year, they illegally auctioned the sacred land of Tai Chi Man. And then when the auction failed, they nationalized the land. This kind of ruling and persecution of religious beliefs and culture deserves the attention and condemnation of the whole world. We simply hope that by speaking out, international friends will better understand the case and remind the Taiwan government to hold the role officials accountable. The unlawful government officials should admit to their mistakes, return the confiscated land belonging to Tai Chi Men, start the persecution of the freedom of religion or belief, and start hurting Taiwan's democracy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Brenda Chen, uh, for this touching testimony. And we will now move to the last testimony of this evening, as it is here night already in Taiwan, before we have the conclusions of Dr. Massimo Introvigne. So now we will hear Ms. Alan Shi who is an engineer and also senior operations manager in his company. Um, just a moment. Sorry about that. Hello. Uh, yeah, I, I have some more introduction. If you allow for have more about you, he also enjoys being close to the nature as well as observing and learning about other cultures. 
You have moved to the United States in the year 2000 and completed your master's degree in computer science at the Syracuse University. And inspired by Dr. Hong, you have become a volunteer and began collaborating with the Taiji men, brothers and sisters, and journeyed around the world to promote the culture of love, peace, and conscience. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for introduction. introduction. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to express my gratitude to all the experts, scholars, and human, human rights activists who are here today. Thank you for your support, understanding, and uh, efforts to help us and the Thai Jimen. It reflects what I learned from IRF summit last month took place in Washington, DC. One speaker said, we don't need sympathy, but empathy. Since my grandmother passed away, my mom has missed her so much. One day, my mom was ac accidentally hit by a motorbike when walking on the street because he was thinking of my grandmother and didn't pay enough attention. Her two main tendons in her both shoulders was severely wounded with one entirely torn off and the other nearly torn off. Due to the fact and consider her health condition, the doctor recommended that she undergo two different procedures. After these two major operations, she healed slowly and got exhausted quickly. The miracle happened after she joined Tai Chi Man and practiced Tai Chi Man Qigong. She made significant improvements in physical, mental, and spiritual health. Because this place is so good, she began referring Tai Chi Man to our relatives and friends. As Ms. Han said, reputation is everything in Taiwan. My parents were under a lot of pressure from other family members and friends after the prosecutor made false accusation against Tai Chi Man. This also affected my aunt who was invited to join Tai Chi Man by my parents. She tried to maintain peace and harmony in her family by stopping coming and practice Qigong because of her husband's strong opposition. My aunt passed away three years ago from cancer. My mother's heart was broken because she knew that if my aunt had not quit practicing Qigong because of the smear because of, because of the smear incident against the Tai Chi Man by the prosecutor. She might have been healthy and alive today. My mother cried every time when she called her sister, but has to put the phone down and, and feel sad because my aunt was not able to take the call anymore. In my first year in the United States, my school hosted an event on Thanksgiving to welcome all students and encourage us to share our heritage with others. I share what I learned from my shifu. It is not good enough when only me doing well. It's truly good only when everyone is doing well. I also share the benefits of practicing Tai Chi Man Qigong. All my friends said that I was a lucky guy. I prob proudly responded, I was from Taiwan. However, when I shared the same experience with other Taiwanese, they were nonetheless influenced by the thousands of rumors and false news dis uh, dis uh, disseminated at the time. One asked me, did Tai Chi Man raise goblins? My landlord warned me, be careful. Tai Chi Man is being indicted. My coworker simply refused to listen to my explanation. Despite it's been 14 years since the Supreme Court's final ruling of Tai Chi Man with no frauds and no tax, the harm caused by the prosecutor Hall, his tactic of abusing authority, disseminating fake news and manip manipulating media has never healed. This situation happened in my family even now. 
Tai Chi Man is like a taboo. I can share my experience, golf, and the joyfulness of the peace and the cultural trips I went through my Sifu and the fellow Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters to my relatives. Even though my life has been enriched by the great cause of promoting love and peace, I feel my heart is still missing a piece, what I can never get back. Thank to Professor Kenneth, this is my first time to hear the emotional scar. I believe this scar makes me feel I'm incomplete inside here in my heart. Even though my parents are over 80 years old, they choose to stand up for justice along with other Tai Chi Man members and protest on the street. Whether the temperature is above 100 de degrees Fahrenheit or in heavy rains, stationed in foreign country, my heart was aching when seeing them on the street fighting for justice. On the other hand, I'm so proud to be their children. Besides those protests, protests on the street, I'm also sent many petitions letters to the president of Taiwan, as well as the president of administrative departments and the control yuan. They all know the truth, yet their responses are all the same with no intentions of, to correct the National Tax Bureau's mistake, and instead, handing my petition over to the National Tax Bureau, which I didn't understand what is their purpose. During these 25 years, my parents, myself, all Tai Chi Man members, as well as my Sifu and Simu, has all been discriminated because of this unjust case. Why does my Sifu has to be treated like this way? Why aren't my relatives and friends recognizing me? Why did the National Tax Bureau ignore the Su Supreme Court's final rulings? Why have those rogue bureaucrats been punished yet, but instead promoted? I've asked myself these questions many, many times, but has received no answers. Over the years, through civil guidance in, and inspiration, we are still working on our case. We do not give up our hope. Through our journey, I have witnessed many other injustice and oppression. The world needs us, and our collective efforts are the driving force to transform the world into a better place. I'm hoping that our voice out will wake up Taiwanese government, that the government has the conscience and courage to correct their mistakes, so as to match the name of the beacon of democracy and uphold the right to freedom of religions or belief. I'm willing, I then will be able to find my missing piece and able to have more energy to help those in need around me. Thank you very much for your listening. And thank you so much, Ms. Alam Shi, for this testimony of the oppression and persecution that you and your family and your movement is still under. Now we move to Dr. Massimo Introvigne for the concluding words of this session. Thank you, Conrad. Uh, I believe uh, uh, mine will be the pre-concluding words because uh, if I'm not mistaken, there will be a video where uh, uh, somebody will sing uh, about the Taiji Man case. In Italy, sometime uh, we say that if people don't listen to you when you speak, you should sing. That's a very Italian way of uh, proceeding. And uh, Taiwanese are not Italian, but I understand that they put in music the, the Taiji Man case, hoping those who don't want to understand, perhaps uh, if it's in a musical version, we will understand. Uh, having said so, uh, 
Uh, I believe uh, that uh, in this uh, uh, webinar, uh, we heard uh, something new and uh, something uh, deeply uh, disturbing and uh, sinister. Of course, we heard uh, a lot uh, of uh, interesting uh, stories, uh, uh, masterful uh, uh, summary of the case by Ken Jacobsen uh, and uh, a passionate version of what's happening in Taiwan by Hans Knott and the important insight from US and the United Nations uh, from uh, Katrina Lantos Sweet Sweat and uh, Thierry Val, uh, which show how the case is becoming truly international. The Lantos Foundation is a main part of the US system to protect uh, religious liberty, and it's important. Uh, uh, its president took a stand uh, for uh, Taiji Men. So, but, uh, and also we have, of course, uh, wonderful uh, testimonies from DZ and from non DZ with direct uh, understanding of the case. This is part, I would say, of our regular faith. Every month we have uh, webinars. Uh, uh, deepening uh, more and more the, the Taiji Men case. But what uh, was uh, unique today, with no detriment to the other parts of this webinar, uh, was uh, the video uh, with the interview with Xi Yuan Sheng, uh, who passed away. <clears throat> and uh, I understand authorized the video to be made public only after his death. And uh, where this uh, uh, tax collector or uh, employee of National Taxation Bureau uh, told the truth about the accusation of uh, tax evasion. Uh, because uh, uh, Taiji men were prosecuted for more than 20 years by the National Taxation Bureau saying, oh, we had investigated and found a tax evasion, then they changed the version many times. But now it comes out something totally different. Either they didn't investigate anything, or they investigate and came to the conclusion there was no tax evasion at all, but prosecutor who, who is the person who instigated all the persecution of uh, Taiji men for, for political reasons, uh, basically coerced this tax officer uh, into telling a court uh, that he had found a tax evasion where he clearly said he told prosecutor who uh, there was no tax evasion or he, he couldn't find any. So today, uh, the uh, expression uh, conspiracy theories is to be handled with great care uh, because it's becoming a four letter word. Uh, you call uh, a group a cult, uh, or you dismiss some theories as conspiracy theories, or you call some uh, Christian group uh, fundamentalist, and that's enough. Uh, it means these things should not be taken uh, seriously. Now, uh, I do believe uh, that some religious movements commit crimes, that some uh, uh, fundamentalist groups look at the Taliban uh, actually are dangerous, but we should uh, talk about a scholarly acceptable definition of the word uh, fundamentalism. And uh, I do believe that uh, some uh, theories about grand conspiracies uh, uh, may be dangerous or false and lead to violence. But uh, historians and scholars know that the world, uh, perhaps uh, uh, we cannot prove that there are grand universal conspiracies, but the world is full of small conspiracies where uh, people, particularly people in the power, uh, commit illegal actions uh, uh, to uh, achieve uh, uh, their goals. So what we found here is not a grand conspiracy of the case of the, 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 the kind normally dismissed by people 
who, who like to talk about conspiracy theories, but what we see is a very normal, unfortunately, uh, very usual uh, among uh, the power that be and the bureaucrats, uh, small conspiracy, small but huge. And this was a conspiracy where a prosecutor uh, representing uh, perhaps uh, larger interests uh, than his personal desire to build a, a career through the, the, the media and the spectacular rates about uh, real or presumed enemies of the government, uh, uh, this prosecutor uh, built a, a, a media campaign uh, against uh, uh, Taiji men, and at the same time, he coerced the, the tax. Uh, one man, basically, uh, the man we heard from, uh, a tax collector, to lie uh, about a tax investigation that never happened, uh, and to tell the court uh, and perhaps the media basically the contrary of what was true. So, I believe this is a very important development we are building together tonight because it proves <clears throat> that what happened was not a mistake. There was no mistake. It was a deliberate framing of Taiji men for obscure motivations through false documents, false accusations, and a false tax investigation that never happened. Now, if this is not enough to reopen the Taiji Men case and uh, cancel the 1992 tax bill, give back to Taiji Men their sacred land, I don't know what more is needed. It's a general principle of the law all over the world that when new elements emerge, even final decisions can and should be revised. Revision is a fundamental principle of justice. And so here we have new elements. We added another one tonight. It's clear that Taiji men were totally innocent people who were framed for obscure political reasons. It's great time for Taiwan, for its decency, for its international image to recognize it. And it's a great time for Taiwan to rectify what happened and to punish those who were involved in this small but very real, very dangerous, very sinister conspiracy. So thank you, and we will close, uh, I understand, uh, the second webinar of today uh, with a musical video. About the Tai Chi Man case, Taiwan Supreme Court found Tai Chi Man not guilty of taste vision or any other charges. The National Tax Bureau and the Ministry of Finance reneged on their promise to revoke the tax bill. Illegally auctioned off the sacred land of Tai Chi Man. The land was illegally taken into state ownership. Ah, 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 ah. Where is the offending authority? Is True.
evasion or any other charges. The National Tax Bureau and the Ministry of Finance reneged on their promise to revoke the tax bill. The National Tax Bureau illegally auctioned The righteous people are united with his conscience to defend justice, human rights, and peace. The righteous people are united with his conscience to defend justice, human. In Taiwan, we at Bitter Winter saw at work the Taliban of the National Tax Bureau or Taliban of the Administrative Enforcement Agency. This is why we are long persecution of a peaceful spiritual movement in a democratic country such as Taiwan. The Taiji main case is internationally exemplary and important, and yes, we plan to continue our campaign about it. Our voice will not be silenced until the voice of justice will speak and solve the case. Then thank you very much everyone for being here today. We know it's night in Taiwan, very late night. I don't know if Massimo wants to say a final word. If not, we can conclude the seminar. So thank you everyone again, Sheshe, and see you next time soon. Bye everyone. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.